and be crowned champion on the World Poker Tour. Get ready for the showdown. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour. We're at Borgata, the crown jewel of casinos here in Atlantic City. I'm Mike Sexton. And I'm Vince Van Patten. You know, Mike, this is the first hotel casino to open up in Atlantic City in over 13 years. And this one was well worth the wait. I mean, really. I mean, everything about this place says big, better, best. Vince, it's been 125,000 square feet of poker madness here at Borgata this week. But I'm telling you, we have a final table that is a powerhouse tonight, and we're about to kick off. Well, everything is on the line, so let's go meet the final six players and look at their chip position. In seat number six, Mickey Siegel, originally from North Carolina, now living in Las Vegas. He's also a horse owner, and he's got 98,000 worth of chips. Starting out in fifth chip position today is Randy Berger from Mesa, Arizona. It's his first tournament ever. He qualified online for $12 to get here. Incredible. Let's see how he does against these top professionals here tonight. Okay, now in seat number five, Noli Francisco. He is from New York, originally from the Philippines. He's a great poker player. He's got 391000 Starting out in third chip position today is David Oppenheim. David will be sitting in seat two. He'll be starting with 419,000 in chips. He is a professional poker player out of Los Angeles, California. He is a top-notch, aggressive superstar player. He'll be a force to be reckoned with today. Yes, he will. Now in seat number four, Charlie Shoten. He's originally from New York and now lives in Los Angeles, California. He's 66 years old. He's got 427,000 worth of chips. Starting out as our chip leader today is Carlos Mortensen. Yes, Carlos to... lives in Madrid, Spain. And he is the 2001 world champion of poker. He's starting out today with 799,000 in chips. He will be the favorite. Vince, he is fun to watch. He's an aggressive attacking player. He'll be the man to beat today. This is a great lineup. We're about to shuffle up and deal. Let's talk about the antes and blinds. The antes, which means everybody puts in that same amount, is 1,000. The two blinds, the money that is forced to be put in the pot by the two guys to the left of the button, are four and 8,000. So that means there's 18,000 sitting on the table before the players are even dealt their cards. The button, of course, represents the dealer, and it's that little white hockey puck. It'll keep going from player to player, and it's going to be on Carlos Mortensen to act first here. Former world champion, looks up a 4-9 and folds. Now look at this, David Oppenheim has picked up a huge hand, two ladies, two queens. What is he going to do with it? David's a very aggressive player at the table, but here he has a legitimate hand, Vince. Right. 22,000. He comes in for 22,000. Look at Randy Berger, 10-9, not going to play. Charlie Shoten going out. And only folds a 9-6. And Mickey Siegel folds an 8-6, and there you have it. The young pro from Los Angeles picks up the first pot. And he, and he shows the hand, he shows the two beautiful ladies. First hand you sit down, you pick up a pair of queens, you think you're seeing things. I mean, sometimes you go a whole line playing poker and you never see a wired big pair. Well, that's true. You know, you got to be saying to yourself, maybe this is my magical lucky day. Well, Vince, we're here at the hottest new property in Atlantic City. Right. Why don't we get the Miss America contestant to teach us how to play No Limit Hold? Oh, okay, Mike, that'll happen. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> the name of the game is No Limit Hold. Fold it. Mickey Siegel, the horse owner, throwing away a 10-6. Here comes Carlos Mortensen. Now, Vince, he has a seven-deuce offsuit, which is considered the very worst hand you can possibly start with. If you could select any two cards, these would be the last two you would select. Look but he's this. raising. He's going to raise it. I love this. He can raise with anything. He's got Remember David Oppenheim to go out. Randy he's has a nice high. He's going to get to watch out. And Charlie folds, and look at that, Vince. It shows you you don't have to have cards, especially when you're playing no-limit poker. You just got to have enough moxie to bet, be aggressive, and pick up the class that way where nobody calls you. He is a great world champion. I like to call him the Antonio Bandaris of the poker world. Well, he's certainly the Antonio Bandit of the poker world, as you'll see here today. <laughs> I'm Carlos Mortensen. I'm from Spain. I play poker to the grid. I can play different styles. You know? I can play slow. I can play aggressive. I can change my game whenever I want. Well, he's got his beautiful wife Cecilia in the audience rooting him on here at Brigada. And it's going to be on the horse owner Mickey Siegel to make up his mind first. He's got 8 6. 
Can't play that. Back on the bandit. Now here's Carlos. 10-8 clubs. He calls. And David Oppenheim's going to call four. It's, it's pretty old. Different suits. Coming and gunning. He's got a real strong hand. Guy likes to play a lot of different cards. And then he just calls 8,000. Randy going out. Charlie with a queen jack. He's going to call it two. No he checks. And that's we've got yeah, four way action traffic. here early Man, on at this final table. Something you don't see very often. Small he business. heads up two players. I'm sure he's exactly going to get himself in trouble. Bob is eight Trey Deuce. And Charlie checks. No he checks. Well, Carlos has hit a pair of eights there. He's flopped the top pair, as we say. And he's going to bet a little bit. 10,000. And notice David now has an ace and a four. He has a straight draw. Yeah, he's got that miracle straight draw. Right. David is going to raise. 25,000. He has raised the pot. He has raised the 25,000. Charlie going out with the queen jack. Well, did he know Carlos caught the top? And back in your face, Carlos. Twenty-five thousand more, he says. Now remember, he has a pair of eights, the top pair. Second card being a ten kicker, not spectacular. He's just going to try to find out what David is up to. Well, there's two hearts on the board. David could have a flush draw. That's what Carlos is thinking. Is he raising now to try to get a free card on the turn? He's going to call it. Action early on here at Bogota. It comes Fourth Street. These are two chip leaders clashing, and there it is, the joker for David right there. He's caught the five. He's made the straight. Check. Carlos has checked, and David, how do you suppress the excitement you have? Show that's why he was shaking. Right now. He yeah. hits the card. And notice his composure, Vince, just like it didn't even help him at all. I know. He's bet 50,000. Oh, the milk play, 50. And Carlos calls. Now, Carlos is drawing dead, as we say. He's got no card he can catch to win this pot with. We're going to see the river. Here it comes. The board pairs fives. Oh, Carlos has checked. Irrelevant last card, of course. And look at, I just love to look at David's face. The man is so excited. You know his feet are doing little dances underneath the table. <laughs> I'm sure he probably didn't like to see the board pair, but I'm sure he's confident that his hand is probably still the best hand. So we know he's going to bet. Just a matter of how much. How much to keep the sucker in, he's saying. It's gotta love this. 120,000. Well, that's a nice 120,000. Nice wing to it. And remember, these are the two chip leaders that are clashing here. Something you don't see a lot. Most of the time at the final table, the chip leaders like to play with the small stacks. These guys are fearless warriors. The top two professionals at the table, and they're clashing early on here at the Borgata. Look at Carlos. Does he want to call here with the two eights for 120,000? I feel like if he raises pre-flop, um, I mean, there's a good chance Oppenheim might call him, but maybe not either. And then he also takes the lead, limits the opponents, and then he probably wouldn't bet a pissy little 10,000 on the flop, which let him come over him. He would have bet more on that flop because it would have been more in the juice. Um, you know what I mean? So I would have, I would have bet pre-flop, limit my opponents, and then there would have been more in the pot when that, if he called that raise, and he wouldn't have bet 10,000 on the flop. He would have bet more. So it would have been more for Oppenheim to think about the re-raise. That was an easy re-raise when he bets 10000 just there. But, um, you know, a small mistake. And he, like I said, he's probably not going to hang himself. He's calling bad here down. But the board looks kind of safe, you know. So other than he must have caught a set. Maybe he had a baby pair and he caught a set. You know, so as long as he keeps himself out of trouble. But, like I said, I raised pre-flop. And then I would have made a much better, stronger bet on the flop. Anytime your bet means nothing, it means nothing. Not enough consequence to the bet. You didn't do anything.
say one thing. He's better off playing seven douches and bluffing with. And he does it. Oh boy. He calls 120,000. David, David turns up the straight, a wheel as we call it. And David hit the lottery ticket there. Look at this. From Queens to hitting the straight on 4th Street. Yeah. David made the wheel. Carlos was the busted hubcap on that play. David Oppenheim, he's married with two kids. This guy plays in the biggest games in LA against Larry Flint in a huge cash game. By the play. My name is David Oppenheim from Los Angeles, California. I play poker professionally. The one advantage that I think I have over my home today is that I'm used to being in high level types of situations. So I don't think that the moment will make me hold. One big advantage David Oppenheim has here today is that he's sitting directly behind Carlos Fortinson. That means Carlos is going to act before he does. I think that's going to help David. It's going to keep him in line better. I think it's going to be to his benefit. So let's see how it plays out. More action to come from Atlantic City in the Bergata Poker Open on the World Poker Tour. Stay tuned. Fucking table is fucking. Notice fun. he just calls. He doesn't raise with the eight. Nothing. Time. And David has that ridiculously <laughs> bad hand. Seven deuce. And look, he's thinking about something. Raising. He's going to raise this pot with the two worst cards you can possibly get. A seven deuce offsuit. What's going on with these seven deuces today? Oh, but look at Carlos. He quickly re raises it. Makes it 75000 in the blink of an eye. Oh, and snapping him right back. Boy, he has caught David with his hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> right, that, was <laughs> that was a cry for help right there, Mike. I'm going to let this one go, Carlos. Trying to get cute here. It backfired on Before it. Before I show you. Really? If you fold, I'll show you, he says. I this fold. Interesting. He folds. I show you. I show you. He shows him one card, not yeah. two. Three. <laughs> I, I'm learning something every day here on the World Poker Tour. That's a beautiful move, Carlos. I tell you, you thought I'd show you. <laughs> Even David loves it. He's smiling. Oh, this guy should be a used car salesman, okay? I mean, he's supposed to be both cars for Pete's sake. Well, the game is on. Yes, it is. Now, this is going to really be fun to see how this pans out today. If you really enjoy poker, this is as good as it gets watching two top-notch players go at it like this. These guys are dueling. Back into action. It's going to be on the great Carlos Mortensen. This time he's got a pretty fair hand. He's got Jack Nine of Clubs. Exceptional hand for Carlos. He's coming in for 24000 David's going to look at a pair of fours this time. You gotta call that. This he goes to his little prayer. Yeah. He's gonna raise it with two four. So I mean, come on, man. There's not that much money in the pot yet, even though he raised. You want to hit the sets with those pockets. You want to see a flop with those pockets. So um, unless I know something different. I'm calling. I want a hammerlock. I'm not playing in the dark poker and guessing he's going to fold to my re-raise. I mean, you'd have to raise about the house to get him off the hand, a decent hand. So it's like, 
you're taking all kind of unknown risk where I just want to play poker and if I catch that set, game on. Carlos got to get back in here. Here we go again here. What is going on here? You two young bucks knocking heads. Of course he's going to raise this for us. <laughs> he can raise with the seven dudes. He can raise with fours, I guess. Raise it 50,000 more. Oh, just a mere BMW car. Now, Randy's got a, a K9. He's been very quiet so far. And all these players are quiet. They're getting out of these guys' way. $50,000. Randy going out. Charles has a six deuce. Hey, man, they should have charged admission for these other players to get in here. <laughs> Charlie Shorten's going to go out. Nobody looks at Jack Deuce in a small blind. No, he no. folds. Mickey with a 10 8 offsuit folds. Back to Carlos with his Jack 9. Well, here we are again, folks. The two knights in shining armor. He's going to call it. He calls 50,000 more with a Jack 9 of clubs out of position, as we say, meaning he has to act first to rest the five. Here comes the flop. Do the flop. The flop comes 8 8 3. Certainly no help to Carlos. Check. And he quickly checked it. Now, this is actually a good flop if you're holding two fours. No big cards are out there. Nothing can scare you much. Look at 100,000. Look at this, David's going to bet it. And he bets 100,000. Nice bet there by David. Look at this, Carlos. He's been here before. Doesn't like it. Well, is he acting here? What, what's going on here? He's got a jack and a nine. That's a guy betting him 100,000. It's come 883. Don't tell me. Look at this, Vince. Oh, bravo, Carlos. Unbelievable. He is raising this pot. Look at that. That's sick. Wow, he's made it 200,000. You do not do this to Carlos the Spaniard. I spit on your bet. Now, this is amazing. He has check raised with this hand, Vince. Yes, he has. The Antonio Banderas of the Polka World. I mean, he can't really represent much. He's mad as hell. Um, David knocking over his I don't his know. I can't imagine David folding. What to do? I'm what assuming to do? he's Folks, all in. Or his seat right now at two maybe four. he could fold. They just shrunk up when your opponent's been crazy. Bad I don't, I don't know. Today. That's weird. LA kid, he's got a problem. But what a bold bet by Carlos right there. You talk about an aggressive, fearless warrior at the table. This is your man. You said it right. I mean, this is what poker is all about taking the play from the other. And he's got David Oppenheim in a you know, vice here. And plus, he has just raised the minimum amount possible. You must raise it the size at least that your opponent bet, which was 100,000. He made it 200,000, which makes it look like he's wanting to call right here. It's a sick game, I tell you. I mean, how do you know what the other guy has? The element of the bluff in poker is so strong, you're watching it here, folks. Oh, he's gonna look at this. He's gonna throw it and fold it. Look at this, he shows them the wow. back nine. Wow. Oh, of course. Wow. I didn't think he so. Played by Carlos. Well, David Oppenheim is sick. Vince and Poker, we talk about how players earn their pot. You know, I don't I don't Let blame you, Oppenheim. You just got a glimpse of why this guy is a He probably was too much of a stack where he's like, fuck it. I'll lose a fight another day, but um you know, if you if you're never laying down to a bluff, you're never laying down enough. So, uh, hats off to Carlos and uh, David Oppenheim. It's not the worst thing in the world. I know I can win in Spain, but America is different. The first time I can, I can to Atlantic City. I can two thousand dollars, and I win. So after two months, I go with my wife. It's like, how do you want a pot like that when a fucking maniac spinning back at you like that? It's like, what do you, what, what's the right bet then there? I mean, the pot was like 160, he bet 100, and Carlos re-popped him. I mean, that's like kind of like, that's kind of fucked up, you know what I mean? Because if someone does that to you, then where you at? It's tough, it's really tough. But, um, what in doubt, go with the math. I'm very competitive in every endeavor. And he's a fine fight in the ring. He's broken and you are playing for real money. You definitely want to fight to the death no matter who the opponent is. So in that respect, I don't have a friend in this thing. Those guys, two great competitors. Friends away from the felt. Right now, it's ego, it's money, it's personal.
they are here to play. They are trying to capture this title, and they are doing whatever it takes to do so, and that includes gambling. That's More action to come from Atlantic City in the Bergana Poker Open on the World Poker Tour. Stay tuned. I think a lot of poker players in their own mind consider themselves the best poker player. I think it comes down to who's the best is who maintains a steady composure and doesn't allow themselves to fall off their A-game. Sticks right next to each other. Yeah, two grenades, and one of them's going to go off. Back to the action. It's going to be on Mickey first. Mickey peeks down at Jack three. The whole rest of this Dunn table is invisible. He folds. Carlos is not going to play with Queen five off suit. Yeah. Taking a risk. Here comes David, raising the pot. He's got a king six of heart in a very good position. He's going to make Randy with an A7 go away. Charlie's out with an 84. And Noli calls with a 4-3 of clubs. Welcome to the game, Noli. <laughs> Here we go. Here comes the flop. Flop comes 8-8-4. Eight, eight, Not bad. He's got a little piece of that. He's flopped two pair. Now it's up to Noli to bet. And look at this. He played like Casper, the friendly ghost, for a while, but he's going to bet 25 grand into David. Now, David only has a king and a six. He's got nothing here. What is he thinking about now, then? Well, you know, he hates to throw away the hand. <laughs> he's thinking about that last hand he threw away. Oh, oh man, David, stop the madness right here. Okay. You know, you call us, you got him out. Don't get sneaky on us here. That's the first hand nobody's come in today, I believe. Oh, he's... And here we go. He's called 25000 with a king six. He's calling this, trying to take this pot away later, folks. He's not calling because he flopped the hand. Look at this. A nine of hearts comes up. Now he has four hearts. He's made a flush draw on the turn. Now Noli checks. He's showing respect at this point. And now it's up to David. Now David could take a free card here to make his flush, but no, he bet 60000 Now he's doing the semi-bluff. It, it helped earlier when he hit the five for the straight. Can he succeed? But look at this. Noli looks very stubborn here. One play. He's going up. He has raised it. <laughs> he watched Carlos raise the minimum last time and take the pot away from him. He's going to try it here. And he's saying, hey, look, I'm from New York. You can't push me around. All right. <laughs> and now look at David. He's back in the stew pot here. Well, he got himself in another fine mess here. <laughs> he's saying, why didn't I take that free card off? Now, it only cost him 60000 to call. No, only 60000 He's going to call it, Mike. Well, he calls it. David's going to call it. We're going to see a fifth street. Now, of course, David's praying for that flush. Can it happen? Well, there's 284000 sitting out on the table now. I can't imagine nobody can be too crazy about his hand. The guy called a bet on the flop, called a raise on the turn, and you got bottom pair. Here it comes. Last card. Last card off is a five. David does not hit this time. And look at this. Look at the guts by Noli. He just has eights and fours, and he's going to bet into David. Now, he's only bet 60,000 here. Now, that's what David's wondering. That's what we call a post-oak bluff in poker, meaning you're making a very small bet at a large pot. However, he has nothing, remember? No, he's busted out, and he's not going to call it. And he folds. Yeah, yeah. And look at this. He's a very popular player. I guarantee you many in this house today are rooting for Noli to win here tonight. And you're right about that. Noli, a good player with Howard Letterer. Man, and Noli Duke. played back in the same underground the fuck out of for years and years. And now Noli is in Atlantic City. Just at get the out of the He just got game. stubborn. Noli, Francisco. I was born in 1941 in the Philippines. Challenging the Shackles. Young professionals at their level. 
just exciting for me. No, but Francisco, he'll be in there and gamble with the best of them, man. Believe me. A true delight to play poker with this guy. No, but Francisco. All right. On the action, it's going to be on Randy Gardner from Phoenix, who's been very quiet this afternoon. He did not picked up much, and here he looks down at a 10 4 offsuit. He folds. Charlie going out. No, he picks up eight deuce. He folds. Nicky Siegel not going to play a 5 3. And here we go. The two chip leaders, the two gladiators at the table. Come on. Carlos just limps in again with an ace. Now, this is interesting. Second time he's done that. He does that, folks, because if an ace comes on the flop, his opponent will never put him on an ace because he would think he would have raised with an ace before the flop. But in the meantime, David's got king, queen of hearts, and he's going up. I don't blame him for raising when a guy limps on a flop with a king, queen of hearts. I'd raise too. Carlos calls. Carlos mixing up his game nicely with the ace. He's going to call. We're going to see the flop. David and Carlos show. Here it comes. Flop is queen, three deuce. Now, David's flop top pair, but Carlos has flopped a straight draw. Carlos checks. But a nice flop for David. He's been checked into it. Now, what's he going to do? He's going to bet it, of course. He bets 45000 now, Carlos is faced with a decision here. Does he want to draw at this out of position for 45000 We say out of position because he has to act first every time now on 4th Street, on the river. You talk about a player playing the other players. Carlos once again looking at David, trying to get it to take the tell, and he's going to call this, Mike. He's going to take a shot. He's calling with the ace high here. Yes, he is. He's hoping to catch a four. But thinks maybe an ace will win for him also. And an ace comes, Vince. Oh, what a beautiful card. He's hit his aces. And he goes all in. Huge bet. Oh, man. One more time. David is put to the test. Look at this, Vince. His hands on his head. <laughs> time after That's time, crazy. he's been faced with tremendously tough decisions to make here. Oh, this gives you an ulcer. But what's going through his mind is, if he calls and loses, he's out of here. What a decision. David Oppenheim, 31 years old. Now, in poker, those are like dog years. He's actually 85. But <laughs> he's got a problem. He's got the second pair and the nut flush draw, as we say. He's counting up his chips. Does he want to go for it all right here? Now, with the cards, as they lie, Carlos is about a 2-1 to one favorite to win this pot if he does get called. In the meantime, Carlos is not going to give anything away. His hand over his mouth like he has duct tape underneath that. David closing his eyes, looking half dead there. He is in a bind. You have to make a decision like this for all your chips, folks. It is tough. This guy's going to be going at it all day long. Two aggressive players. What a bet into David. I love that bet by Carlos. He wasn't fooling around, wasn't going to give him any draw to beat him. He moved all in on him, going to put him right to the test. I call. Because he's going to he call. Calls. He does make the call. Oh. You have an ace? Oh. Okay, he has to call. Oh. Okay. He has, he has to be an ace. <laughs> he's not going to like the way he sees it. Oh, he hates it. It's Carlos, ma master manipulator, showed him that bullshit earlier, just to get him to make this call now, it came, it came around, bad call, you would have been better off earlier pushing all in with your hand, now you're going to make that call with this board, if anything, I would have thought that he had a shit ass four or five and the ace came in the straight or something, you know what I mean? It's like he was in afraid of the ace the way he played it. So I would have thought he had a straight, let alone a fucking ace. I mean, two pair or something, not to call it that. That's a dumb play. I'm disappointed. Well, he knows he's about a two to one underdog right now to win this pot. He's gotta get lucky, he's gotta catch a king, a queen or a heart, or he's gonna be out of here in sixth place. Huge chips on the line. Can David draw out at this point? Well, stay tuned. We'll be right back for the exciting conclusion of this hand on the World Poker Tour.
imagine that. He's about to cut the other big fish at the table. <laughs> It'll be a runaway if he does. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We are involved in a massive pop between David Oppenheim and Carlos Mortensen. Well, right now, Carlos is going to like it because he's about a two-to-one favorite. And if he wins this pot, he will have a commanding chip lead in this tournament. He's got to dodge a king, a queen, or a heart here to win this pot. The last card coming up. This could be it. The two chip leaders going at it. Here it comes. Oh, wham! The king comes off with two pair for David. He yes. has done it. He has outdrawn Carlos. Oh, he's hit it. He's made his two pair. He is so excited. But look at Carlos. Absolutely devastated. Can't Tell you it what, it's going to keep the table pound. very and interesting. I'm glad that happened. A million in chips and been in commanding position to win this tournament. Now he's back to a dog fight position. Oh man, the LA kid hits it on the fifth street, and Carlos, that is got to hurt. One hundred and eighty-eight thousand more of chips over to David Smith. Yeah. Next, we are watching the gunfight at the OK Corral between Carlos and David. And that time, Carlos took the bullet. They are in a true schoolyard slap fight. I'm going to pause it here. Right, too we're much going to back handle. into the action. It's going slap fight. All right, well, we're going back into the action. It's going to be on Noli. Francisco, who's got a queen four off suit. Now, and now Mickey looks down and finds a nice hand, two jacks. He's going to raise it. Well, he's been real quiet, but he's got a real hand to Jax. He's going to go up. Get the hell out of Dodge. You would think I had a point of hand since the beginning Carlos of time. Going out. David Oppen on the LA oh. kid has hit the Moby Dick of hands. Pair oh, my God. What bad luck. hand you can pick up before the flop. Crazy. On the button, picks up two aces and re-raises. 50,000 more makes it 90,000 to go. And he's going out with five deuce. Now look at this, Charlie's got two nines in the big blind, and he quickly throws them. And now we're back to Mickey. Now remember, Mickey's on the short stack. He's only got about 85,000 worth of chips left. I mean, if he calls this 50, he's going to obviously put in all his chips. Mickey, the horse owner, you could be in quicksand here. Make the right decision. I can't believe he's hesitating so long. He does have a big hand, and he's got to be thinking David's been pushing everybody around. Yeah. He's in a good position. That's right, Rance. I mean, David's one of the most aggressive players at the table. You know, this is a very tough lay down here to throw two jacks away here. In the meantime, Mickey with his hand cupped over his ear like he's listening to a transistor radio, maybe one of his horse races. I don't know. <laughs> well, he's going to have to get some pretty good vibes to lay this hand down, I think. He knows if he calls and loses this pot, he's out of this tournament. <laughs> okay. He's Still. thinking about it. That's, that is kind of shocking. He's laying down a pair of jacks, Mike. What a lay down that is for him. Amazing, in fact. Well, he's an amazing person. He learned. To Pretty fucking sick. I'm either going to be like A, he's a pussy, or B, he recognized that he's the tightest player at the table and the guy didn't give up shit. Man, I can't imagine that going with it. It's probably more that he's a pussy. But if he did recognize that he's so fucking tight that the guy didn't give a shit and raised him, it's hard to say. I don't know if I want to give him credit. I know I would have shipped it. <laughs> would have been fucked. Booker, he said in North Carolina from a bootlegger cabin. And he has gone on to own horses. And now he's at the final six on the World Poker Tour. What gets better than that? The win. There you go. My name's Mickey Siegel, and I'm from Las Vegas. Poker makes your heart pump, makes you excited. It's fascinating. The first time Charlie's coming in all day, he raised with a 10-9 in first position. And he's going out. Mickey with 4-3 going out. I like that tonight, Judo. Now we're around to David. He's got an A6 of clubs. Yeah. He also has 4,000 in the pot. He opts to call 21,000 more. Randy's going out. Two-way action. 
A6 against 9, 10 of diamonds. Here comes the flop. This flop is queen, 9, 7 with two clubs. Now this means David has enough flush draws, we say, and Charlie has flopped two nines, the second pair. David checks the flush draw. Charlie involves already. He's going to come out and bet it. Charlie bets 50,000. Many players would check raise here in David's spot. Well, we've seen him do it before today. He loves to do the semi-bluff. Well, I like to do it this time. I like check raising with enough flush draw here. Oh, he set him up so beautiful to do that. But he's no. Just calling, though. Very interesting play here for David just to call here with enough flush draw on the flop. Let's see what happens. Catch. Here it comes. Now an eight comes off on the turn. Now what this gives David is an open end straight draw and a flush draw. So he has a lot of outs to win this pot, and now he's going to bet it looks like. Yeah, a lot of draws here. On the other hand, Charlie has made a 7, 8, 9, 10 to go along with his pair of nines. So he has an open end straight also. Dave knows he has a lot of outs, and he's going to come out and bet strong. And he's leading out and betting 60,000. Charlie showed him. True thinker is going to quickly call, it looks like. Wow, what a call here by Charlie. Now, Charlie has a pair of nines and an open end straight draw. And he calls 60,000. We're going to see the river. Here it comes. Boom, a nine. Three nines for Charlie. Oh, well done, Charlie. You've done it. Now David holds his head down. He knows he didn't hit his hand. Does he want to bluff at this pot? That's the question. David, you can't hit every hand. This yeah. time he does not. What's he going to do? He knows it's the first time Charlie's come in. He's checking to Charlie, and look at Charlie, it looks like he's... Well, he's made three nine. You think he's going to make a bet here? Get a little fake there with the chips. Oh, oh he's just going to check. Charlie's checked three nines here. He it very conservatively. He's going to take that pot. I mean, he wins the pot, but it was a little conservative at the river, in my... Good check. Only one that's gonna call you, the one guy you beat. Q. So Charlie show, is showing up finally. He is playing at the final table. Nice pot. Well, Vincent, is anybody's Don't let that mini tiny lesson get past you because that's key. You get cute there, and you lose the whole pot because he goes in over the top. It, that, there's the, the straight there, a, a fucking a boat, a full house, you know? Fuck that shit. The, the correct play, without a doubt. Race right now. Noli's out in front with about 580,000 chips. Charlie has 508,000. Carlos has 480. David has 470. Randy's got about 270, and poor Mickey's sitting on a short stack with about 50,000. He's going to have to make something happen soon. Okay, action's going to be on David Oppenheim. Looks like he's never met a hand that he didn't like. This time he's got king three. And he folds out of first position. Finally folding. Randy with a nine deuce folds. Charlie going out with queen seven. Now here's Noli on the button with a six four off suit. But he's raising. He's going to raise it. I love this. Hmm. Well, he's up against the bohemian. The pair of aces. Mickey's found That's why I don't, I don't just raise because of the button. I mean, I don't, 000. but there's plenty of opportunities to raise. You don't have to wave the fucking button. Now, and some more shit. Noli is pot committed here. He's got to call this bit. It's only going to cost him another 17000 to call. There's over 100000 in the pot. Uh, you're not going to be happy. Noli's saying you're not going to be happy. He's only got a 6 4 off suit. But you never know what's going to happen. We're going to see a flop. He's going to call this. Well, he's pot committed. He has to call in my mind. And he did the right thing. He's not going to like it looking down at two aces. And the horse owner turns over very proudly his pair of aces. And Noli, he's laughing, gets up. A little poker <laughs> chuckle there. Well, I got the best of it now. Here comes the flop. The flop is queen eight three. No one's going to have to catch two runners to win this pot. Fourth three coming up. It's a ten. Doesn't do it. Mickey's going to double up. He can saddle up one of his horses. Vince, he's back in the race. 
very excited, but Ace is paying off. He is not going away. We still have six. Who's going to take the title? Worth more than $470,000 for the first place. Stay tuned. More action to come from Atlantic City here on the World Poker Tour. <laughs> Walking sticks. Ah, I didn't know that. Welcome back to the Borgata Poker Open, this week's stop on the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton, along with my partner Vince Van Patten, and Vince, we've got a winner of a show so far tonight here in Atlantic City. Now, this has been very good. It's been a very tough strategic battle, a little bit of ugliness out there, gnashing of teeth, but anything can happen. Here's how the players rank right now. Well, the horseman gets back on the horse after doubling up there. Mickey Siegel moves his stack to over 100,000. Well, I'm impressed by Mickey. He throws away jacks against aces, and now he picks up aces, makes it work for him, of course. Back in action is going to be Anoli, who looks at an ace three off suit. And from New York's not going to play. Mickey King six of diamonds, he folds. Carlos taking a stab with a queen ten off suit. It's not the call. I call. Trying to see a cheap flop here. And now David picks up eight seven of hearts. And he's going to call. He's just going to call. I'm surprised he's not going over the top of that. Now here's Randy in a small blind with a jack four off suit. Okay. And he called. Say it ain't so, Randy. What are you doing there? I'm trying to look at the spot. A nice four-way action. Let's see who's going to get lucky. Flop coming up. And bingo! Comes Jack Jack 7. Star Spangled Banner going off. And Randy, he's just hit three of a kind. Yes, he has. Now, his problem is he's the first one to act here. How do you play him to get value out of him? That's the question. I don't think he can believe it himself. Check it, you shit bag. <laughs> You're right. He's hit three of a kind. Now that's a sign of an amateur player right there that goes back. You know, checking this, it for the third time, right? This may give information to these top players. He's going all in here. A $233,000 bet right here by Randy. Very bold and aggressive. Notice all the players are quickly folding. What a slug. They flew out of that hand. Well, i got to tell you, Vance, I don't like this play by Randy. There's no value at all in moving all in in that spot. With aggressive players behind him, like Carlos and David, he should check the flop. He's got to hope someone tries to steal the pot. And in fact, look what David had. David would have flopped two pair with an ace kicker here. Had everyone checked the hand, you know he's going to bet that hand. Uh, pretty blatant, and uh, it, it kind of backfired. He could have won a lot more. You know, give him credit for getting here, but that was sort of an amateurish bet right there, scaring everybody out of the pot. Twelve bucks. That's how much it cost rookie Randy Berger to make it to this final table. Cinderella is alive, That was the worst play in history. I've only been playing poker for six months. Nine. Now we're up to Randy. Right, this time he's got ace jack. Okay, look, he's calling. He's going to play. He doesn't play many pots. Charlie out. Nola goes out. Two-way action here. It's ace-jack against ace-ten. We're going to see the flop. Flop is ace-six-five. Both players have flopped a pair of aces. Well, that is exciting, especially for Randy. It's exciting for Randy because his kicker, as we say, is higher than Carlos's. So right now, he is a big favorite to win this pot. We're going to steer down Carlos, who he's checked into him. I must say, I'm a little surprised Carlos checked the flop there. Randy is in a great position at this point. He's lining up to bet. 75. Bet 75,000. Nice solid bet. Into Carlos, who also has the pair of aces. Now, this is intriguing to me, Vince, that Carlos didn't bet this flop, and I promise you he wasn't checking this flop to check raise. He's not trying to trap his opponent here. His fear is that he's beat right now. He won't throw well, it's interesting, he's asking Randy how much he's got, but believe me, he's not asking him because he can't read the 
amount of chips he's doing because he wants to hear his voice exactly 100, no, I'm sorry, 100 more. See how nervous he is? Try to protect his tail on him. Well, if Carlos calls this, he'll be heading for thin ice, then. You know something, he's got to think back before the flop. Randy hasn't played too many hands. Yeah, exactly. So he's thinking he's playing big cards. Exactly what he's thinking, Vance. He knows the guy doesn't play many. He called his raise, and now he bet confidently when the ace hit. And you have to admire Carlos's instinct, Vance. He fears his ace ten is not good right now. Let's talk about Randy Berger. Came in here, and he has a shot at winning a half a million dollars. He's got Carlos where he wants him. Look at this. Carlos is calling. Mm -hmm. He Nothing. certainly is. This could be very good for Randy. He's walking out on the branch on the end of the tree here. Fourth Street coming up. A nine, no help. Okay. Carlos quickly checks. Oh, and Randy quickly moves all in. Oh, yeah, in a flash. And look at Carlos. He knows now that's not a good sign. You don't expect amateurs to bluff at you, Vince. You know, you, you, you put them on a hand most of the time, and that's what Carlos is worried about here, that his ace 10 is not good. In fact, we know it's not because of the WPT cam. At this point, I really got to say that Randy's a, you know, playing like it's a human roadmap. Carlos is on to it at this point. Now remember, folks, he's playing a pot against a former world champion, and he's got him hemmed up about as good as you can. He's got ace jack against ace 10. Well, Randy would be begging for this call. He would be a huge favorite. He would double up and put him right back in contention. Can Randy Berger do it? Look at this. He's called it. Can he make the call? He's not going to like over? it. When he sees it, he's not going to like what he's up against here, Vince. Carlos oh. has to catch a 10. Oh, and he grimaces as he looks at that. He knows what a dog he is. He knew it, Vince. He sensed that he was beating out of hand. Last card coming up. Well, he's got to catch a 10 to win, Vance. He's a big, big underdog right now to win this fight. Carlos oh, standing up. Here it comes. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, oh shit. Smoke. Unbelievable right there. Carlos got lucky this time. He got real unlucky against David earlier. Poor Randy, you've got to feel for him. That's an awful feat. That is a dagger in your heart. You fought your way all the way to this final table. You can't get your money in a better spot, man. Uh, you know, when that happens to you, you want to throw away all your poker literature. You know, it's devastating. Well, that is tough luck for Randy Berger, but give this guy credit. He won this trip to the lovely Borgata here on $12. Thank God, the guy was a waste of breath. He's taken home $41,125, a magnificent performance by Randy Berger from Mesa, Arizona. In the meantime, Carlos Mortensen is one happy guy. One of the players is gone down to five with a half a million at stake. Oh, shit, look at that. Yeah. Charlie. Look 
at this, and he picks up a king queen. Oh, nice hand. He's going to raise it here. Fifty thousand. He makes it. Make it going out. Carlos as well goes out with a five three. Now let's pass David in the big blind. Let's pick up Ace Jack offsuit. I'm on. He's going all in with advance. Two hundred twenty five thousand. Oh, Bob. Snowy quickly calls 175,000 more with the King Queen. Yeah, King Queen for Noly. We got Ace Jack against King Queen. Right now, David's about a three to two favorite. I got him forward. David has to have his hand hold up or he'll be eliminated in fifth position. Want to chop it? Yeah. Noly asked if he wanted to chop it. He knows he's the underdog. But as we've seen before today, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Okay, what are we going to do here? Ace Jack against King Queen, let's have a flop. Here comes the flop. Flop is 10 7 4. No help at all. Nobody's going to have to have a king or a queen. Here's Fourth Street. A nine comes off. Now that means any face card will win for Noli. Picture card. Tell the board. Picture card. Last card coming up. It's a 10. David's going to double up here. Oh, that is a big double up for David. Well, the best hand held up. 470,000 goes into David Stack. A beautiful ending to this hand. Events, the six players who started the night are survivors. They battle over every hand for three days, and that takes its toll. You're right. Now, Shauna Hyatt took a look at the mental toughness it takes to win, and she found out that the players that do well have to hang on to the losing stars. This week's Poker Corner brought to you by Anheuser World Select. In the Jack the Ripper eyes. I'm going to push you around. 
Checks right behind you, man. He's doing a little trap play. It comes 4th Street. Now the 8 comes up on the turn. This gives David a 2-way straight now. A 3 or 7 would make him a straight. He's checking again. And Charlie goes all in with his two aces this time. And you see this? David is showing his hand, kind of. I've never seen a professional player ever show his hand, kind of flash it back, and then call. You know, it's... So there it goes again. Yeah, you're right, Vince. He folds. I love the way Charlie played that hand, Vince. Well, Charlie is a very intelligent player. And you know something? In life, he's a very interesting man. He does a thing called reversal, in which he has someone tape record all of his conversations and then reverse it, and he finds out things about himself. What are you talking about? I don't know. But they say it's true. I had been in the computer software business for 20 years, and I've always been an executive or in marketing or in management in the life insurance industry. On the surface, Charles Scotty Warbuck Shoten may seem like your classic career man, but as we know, in poker, looks can sometimes be deceiving. In order to get become a better poker player, I had to become a better person, and I'm aware of all the energy on the table, all the different players, and the flow of the game. So until I was able to really be present in the moment, my game was not that good. And it's that same Zen approach that has definitely taken 
taken Charlie down the road less traveled. An old Hawaii shaman has been an important influence in my life. What he's taught me has been very, very important. Cleaning everything out of your system so you could be like just a plate of glass. And even with so much riding on this event, for this sage, the strategy is simple. I just notice the thoughts that are not helping me, let it go, and just trust that some other force, a higher power, will uh, dissolve it. And it, and it works. Not at the poker table, only, but every moment of my life. The man right there is doing quite well here. Whatever he's doing, I think I'm going to start doing Well, you're right. He's a very intellectual kind of guy. I mean, he's unique, this guy. Back into action here. Carlos going out with a 4-3 this time. David looks at a 6-deuce. He's also not going to play. Charlie has a junk hand in the 8-tray. Only calls out a small blind with a queen 8. Got Nikki with a 4 9. We're going to have a flop here. Here comes the flop. Flop comes Jack 8 5. You know, he picks up a pair on a roll here. He's going to bet it. Got this pair of 8s. Oh. Now, what the heck is Mickey doing here? Mickey is making one of those calls with no hand and no draw. Oh, we're seeing it a lot here. And a 7 comes up. You passed it, Bess. No lead checks. And here he goes. He's going to try to steal it right here. He's going to Carlos right here. Will it pay off? I'm amazed these guys are making this play like this. Oh, boy, we're learning something here. No lead calls the 50,000. Last card coming up. Can he continue it? And the king comes off. Helps neither player. No lead checks. He's going to continue it. Well, the only way he can win the pot is to try to bluff at it right here. He's betting 100,000. And it's a Noli quick call. quickly calls. What an amazing read by Noli right here to put him on a bluff here. Folks, this is a real solid poker player, and Noli picked him off like an ear of corn. He sure did. That is the downfall of Nicky. Look at the tap on the table. So we are seeing all kinds of different strategies here, Mike. I don't know what that was. Aggressiveness, sneakiness, you name it. Stubborn. We're seeing it all here today. I didn't bet enough, probably. Back to the table. It's going to be on Charlie to act first. Very passive today. Biden his time. Just trying to move up a notch at a time here. 8 4 off to Fold. I can't believe it. Noli's going to pick up the same hand. A pair of nines once again. Oh, look at these nines coming out for him. Comes in for 50,000. This time, Mickey's got a pair of threes also. Now, he calls 50,000. Wants to see a flop. Yes, he does. Calls out. David Oppenheim going out. Two players with wired pairs. Right now Mickey's going to need some help to win this time. Here it comes. Here comes the flop. Oh. Bingo for Noli. 9-7-5. Oh, monster time. Hit the three of a cunt on the flop. Notice he's checked. Oh, yeah. He's dug the hole. He's putting the branches and the twigs <laughs> over it, waiting for the sucker. And here he is. Yep, here he comes. He's falling right in the hole here, Ben. He comes out. He bets 50000 and Noli's going to do a massage play, but raising only 50. Yeah, the minimum raise right here. And look at this. Mickey doesn't even take his time. It doesn't look like the thank you. Oh. Well, maybe he is thank you. Look at that. He wanted to bite quickly, but now he's second guessing it here. Go with your instincts there, Mick. Well, Noli has let his opponent into a minefield here now. Will Mickey blow himself up? He most likely will if he calls it. Oh. He's got to go all the way. Uh, no one's happy about that. Flop on the top set. Uh, he's going to turn the cards over. Let's see the reaction when he sees a, he's up against a set of nines. So right now, Mickey is a little over 900 to 1 underdog to win this pot. Oh, he almost had a stroke when he saw the set there. He knows what a huge underdog he would be, but it is not over. Anything can happen still. Here we go. He needs a miracle. Not going to happen on 4th Street. He's falling into a big manhole here. He can catch a 6 to win the pot, though. Anything can happen. Who knows? Last card is going to come up. No, doesn't do it. This thing is over for Mickey. Mickey had a little brain lock there, I'm afraid, Ben. All right, he can go back to the racetrack. He is going to take home 
175 miles for his performance today. He played a nice turn on this. He just stumbled there the last couple of hands. No, he did. And he's a great gentleman and a great player as he walks away at the Pagano. Now, Mike, we are down to four. The players are all excited. Who's going to take home nearly the half a million dollars first prize? Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. Oh, and he's not going to call. 
Carlos has got a five ten of diamonds. Right. Here we go. Nothing changes with Carlos. He'll play anything. Comes in for a hundred thousand with a ten five. And it folds. And Charlie once again has a nice hand. He has a King Jack. Oh, he's got the Kojak. He's going all in. He looks like Kojak with the bald head. Carlos quickly called. Well, Carlos quickly called him because he was pot committed there, Vince. It only cost him sixty-eight thousand to call. There's over two hundred thousand in the pot. Can he get lucky and outdraw another man and knock another man out? Let's see. Who knows? Let's see the flop. So he doesn't win this hand. He'll be eliminated. Here it comes. And he's hit his jacks. He's got the pair of jacks on the flop. This is one of the great flops for Carlos, though. Oh, he's flopped a pair and a flush draw, as we say. He's fourth straight. A five, a ten, or a diamond is what Carlos is going to need, or Charlie is going to double up. Charlie's sweating this out. Here comes the river. He dodges it. <laughs> He does, and the sun will come out tomorrow. Yeah, give Charlie credit there. He read Carlos beautifully, he put all his money in. You know, the great thing about Charlie is one second you think he's passed out. You know, he's going to sleep at the table. The next second, look at him. Looks like he's going tap dancing on the roof. Vince, when you're stacking chips, you automatically wake up. Four players left at Bergada. Who's going to take home the big prize? Don't go away. More to come here on the World Poker Tour. I'm Vince Van Patten and welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We are in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And I just realized, Mike, this is the biggest prize in the history of poker in Atlantic City. Vince, I'm telling you, everything has been first rate here at Borgata, including the poker. And we've still got several top players in the hunt for this WPT title. Let's take a look at the standings. Here we go. Right now, Carlos is on the short stack, but only 140,000 chips. Noli is our chip leader with about a million two hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> David in second spot with about six twenty five. Followed by Charlie well, with Carlos is on the fucking uh, back in action here. Action short stack. David. David's got a queen jack this time, Mike. Off suit, two different suits. He's opting to play it. He comes in for a hundred thousand. Daddy Warbucks has a seven deuce. Not going to call. Ace Jack, what is he going to do with it? Noli goes up to 300 with an Ace Jack. Yep, he's re raised it, makes it 300 to go here. Back to the Spaniard, and look at this. He's picked up two sixes here. That's a monster for Carlos Mortensen. And I'll tell you what he's thinking about here, Vince. He's thinking about making a stand, and he's thinking about it because he assumes David's not going to call a $200,000 re-raise, and if he plays this pot, he's going to get about three to one on his money, where he can get right back in the hunt in this competition. Well, it's kind of tricky to get away from this hand, but, you know, he has been raised a pretty big raise here. What is he going to do? Well, it's been raised and re-raised. There's no way he would play it if he thought the three guys were going to be in this pot, meaning he's going to be against one opponent, Noli. And if Noli has two high cards, that means he's a slight favorite to win the pot, and he'll be getting more than three to one on his money. Well, that's assuming a lot. That's assuming that Noli doesn't have a legitimate wired bigger pair. Well, if he has that, he's a dead duck. He has to outdraw him. Lots of things to think about for the man from Madrid. He looks again in his hand. If he puts him on two big cards, this would be a brilliant call right here. Look, he's doing it. He's going to plunge. He is going for the attempted triple up here. I knew right. He's got David out, of course. Hey, guys. Hi. Well, Carlos is going to like this a little bit. He looks at the ace jack. He's a slight favorite. Well, can he survive? We're going to see the flop. Bang! This is devastating for the Spaniard. Don't hit the flop. He's hit the aces on the flop, Mike. 
Point Street comes up. Nine. Not going to help him. Carlos has to catch a six or he's going to be out in fourth place. He knows what a dog he is. That's good. Coming up. It is over for Carlos. Doesn't do it. Look at this. And Vince, even though he got knocked out on this pot, you have to admire his poker instincts here. What a champion. He's going to walk away. $70,000 richer. Now, even though he's taking home $70,000, Vince, I guarantee you he's disappointed. He's a big chip leader coming to this final table. He really thought it was going to be his day. Turns out it wasn't. He went out in fourth place, but we got to see some exciting poker from him today. Uh, he goes to his wife, his beautiful wife. Walking away hand in hand. What a great effort this week. But we are down to three players here on the World Poker Tour. Three wonderful players. It's a long video. I'm going to stop it here to be continued. <laughs>